Well, hello, everybody. It's Dr. Carmen Bryan, and this is Car Chronicles. How are you guys doing? Thank you guys so much for joining me. You guys ready? Let's do this. So, you know, people that have narcissistic personality disorder or people that just narcissist in nature, you know, on the on the scale in which is not a diagnosis, they're just narcissists or manipulators. Just say manipulators uh, and gaslighters. You know, they want what they want and they want it the way that they want it and they want control. And when you have like, for example, narcissist parents um, that fiend illnesses or or they may not fiend an illness, they become hypochondriacs or or they may take a diagnosis and run on with that diagnosis. You know, um, those that may have uh, fibromyalgia, those that may have um, mild onset of dementia, those that have, you know, they take it and they go beyond and they and sometimes they play out this illness like they're in the end stages of it you know and and their memories are still intact you know little things that they may forget or you know they they the fibromyalgia can be treated with medication or you know in their early stages maybe stage one cancer stage two cancer which you know the doctor may have told them that we can we can fix this no problem chemotherapy or you know uh, radiation and, and and you know but they take it above and beyond and believe it or not sometimes they refuse to seek treatment because they want your attention now especially if you are a child of a narcissist and that could be young or an adult a lot of you are adults and you have finally discovered what you're dealing with when you're dealing with this narcissist and you've made up in your mind that I no longer will allow you to control me you cannot control me you cannot have every moment of my time do know that there are narcissists that are jealous of you and those sometimes are your parents they're jealous over your success they're jealous over the fact that you may be married they're jealous over the fact that you have things that they don't have. You have a family, you have friends, you have a life. And these are all the things that they push out of their lives. And then what they do to get your attention, especially if you have pulled away and you've decided, let me put my family first. I'm not going to keep putting you first because all you do is just take you down me. You talk about me. You make me feel bad. So what they do is they punish you. They punish you because they have lost control of you. They punish you because they have lost their grip on you. And they'll do things like spoil the mood. You can be having a conversation with them and tell them something great that has just happened. Oh, guess what? You know, my, my daughter, my son has just, or I just bought a, a new car. I just, you know, and they'll never applaud you. They'll always make you feel bad about your accomplishments. They make you feel bad about what you do because they're trying to punish you, number one, for not allowing them to have control of you anymore. And number two, they're not going to celebrate you because they're jealous of you. And so it's hard a lot of times as a child of a narcissist because of the fact that they're, they're they are projecting their misery on you. You have a great marriage or you have a decent marriage and children and a home and, and a nice career and friends and you have things to do so they always have something negative to say they have something negative to say about your man or about your woman you know you can't trust no women you can't trust no man you know all men do this all men do that and really they're projecting themselves onto your situation they may have messed up their marriage or their marriage may not have worked so they project it on you because misery loves company or you have nice things they won't applaud you and the person that you're looking for affirmation or confirmation you know or a pat on the back is from your narcissistic parent and remember the competitive and so if you have friends you know if they get around your friends now this is sometimes for the younger generation sometimes those parents act as if they are the age of your friends some of the parents actually started dating your friends and you are humiliated and you are embarrassed because you cannot believe what in the world are you thinking and then they tell you I have needs too and it's almost like you're horrified. What are you doing? Why are you running with my generation? You're in your 40s, 50s, 60s. These are like in their teens, pedophile. But in the, in the, oh, you heard me say that? But they, they are in their teens. They're in their early 20s. What are you doing? And then you have those parents, not just competitive, they start dressing like you. They dress under the age. And it doesn't even look right on them. You're too old to be dressing like that. You know, those men that be wearing them skinny jeans with the muffin top. Or got the nerve to, to, to wear those muscle shirts, you know, them tight muscle shirts with a muffin top. Or you know the women that try to wear those tight dresses and they're like three or four pieces of ham struggling up underneath that dress. You know, the ones that have all that cottage cheese and cellulite and their little knees are all wrinkled up and everything. I'm not saying you do you. 
You do you, boo. If that's you feel good about yourself, but if you competing with your daughter, you already know that there's a problem. And and daughters, sometimes when you have narcissistic mothers, you know, that's exactly what they do. They compete with you. They try to look like you. They wear your hairstyle. They try to get into your clothes. They even take your clothes, your makeup, all because of the fact that they're competing with you. And they're not young anymore. They don't age, uh, uh, you know, they don't age gracefully. They age and they fight while they're aging. But yes, one of the hardest things is to be around them. And they're like, what is it called? Debbie Downers? They're Debbie Downers. You're having a wonderful day and they come around and they just got to make you feel horrible. You want them to come. You really don't want them to come, but you're trying to be polite and you're trying to invite them to your house. But you already know that when they get to your house, the whole atmosphere is going to change. They're going to make it sad. They're going to make it, oh my God. They're just going to make it, it's just miserable. They're going to make it miserable. But yet, when they get around other people, they forget that they're angry or they forget that they're miserable or they forget that they're sick or they forget and you're looking at them like that is not how my mother or father acts on a daily basis. That right there is letting you know that it's a game and they just forgot that you're watching. And then when they get back around you, they remember, oh, yeah, I'm mad at you or oh, yeah, I'm sick. Or, oh, 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 yeah, that's right. You know, oh, woe is me, you know, and then if you have siblings. You know, they complain to your siblings because they're pulling on those flying monkeys. Because you know those siblings are going to call you and tell you, you know, why don't you talk to your mother or father? You know, why? You know, there's only one parent that you have. Uh, as a matter of fact, I said this uh, recently. Someone um, was talking about how they had been um, really abused and misused by the parents. I mean, they were horrifically abused by their parents when they were younger. And someone went on and said, you know, uh, regardless of the abuse, remember, you only have one parent. You only have one mother. You only have one father. So regardless whether they hurt you or not, or whether you've been traumatized, you need to love them. You need to do this. You need to do that. I don't teach that. I do not teach that. Because number one, you can respect a person from a distance. You can love a person from a distance, but that doesn't mean that it is a healthy relationship. It could be a very toxic relationship. And how is it that we can come and tell people about these toxic relationships that they're in, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever. But then when it comes to the parents, those, those rules don't apply. Well, those rules still apply. Because if your parent is purposely making you miserable and purposely punishing you, that does not mean that you have to directly interact with them all the time. You can, you know, contact them. Hey, we're going to bring a plate over just checking on you make sure you're okay but you already know it's gonna be a story it's gonna be oh my god i have i have ingrown toenails oh my gosh i got split ends oh my gosh i can't find my other earring oh my gosh you know my, my lashes them fell out but they're gonna make it a 911 incident because they need your fuel and that fuel is paying attention to running it's like you running in a hamster wheel or you running with your head cut off just running in a circle trying to make sure you appease them let me tell you something have you ever seen, you know, you've seen those, um, what are they called? Those big um, holes in the ground, those uh, big, uh, whatever those big holes, they just appear and they, and they just keep going. It doesn't matter how much you try to put in that hole. You'll never fill that hole up. It doesn't matter how much you try, how much dirt you try to put in the sinkholes. That's what it's called, sinkholes. It doesn't matter how much dirt you try to put in a sinkhole. You'll never fill the sinkhole up. So you're just working and you're working, you know, pointlessly. Well, when you're dealing with a narcissist, you're dealing with a person that's walking around and they're an empty hole. They have all sorts of voids and they're empty. And no matter what you do, no matter how much you try to appease or please or make them feel good about themselves or I love you, you are wasting your time. You can say it once or twice, but after a while you realize, you know, you got to work on you. That's why I tell you guys always work on yourself. There is not another person that can fill the void in your life. You have to work on yourself first. You got to fill the voids in your life. You got to get to the therapy. You know, you watching social media and YouTube videos, that is not therapy. That is not one-on-one -on -one contact with a therapist or a coach or someone that can help you and the details of your life. When you're on social media, those are general discussions and it may hit in the areas of your life that you've experienced this torment, but you want someone to specialize in your situation, to understand your situation, give you advice and talk to you about your particular situation and wound and hurts. That's why I tell you guys, invest in yourself. You know, that's why I have a conference coming up on July 29th. You know, I was going to put that in there. July 29th is unpackaging the trauma. Some of you guys have been so traumatized. Invest in yourself. We buy, we take a lot of money and, and, and purchase hair and makeup and nails and this and that and this and coffee throughout the years. Take that invested in yourself. You are your greatest asset. You are your greatest investment. 
You got to survive because someone is waiting for you to make it and tell your story.